Welcome to this presentation about the VOR equipment test, required by one of the most often overlooked IFR regulations. I'm Bruce Williams, a flight instructor based in Seattle. You can find more information about me at my website, blog, and YouTube channel. If you fly IFR and use VORs, even as a backup to GPS, FAA regulations require that you check the accuracy of the VOR receivers and indicators in your aircraft every 30 calendar days. The key references are 14 CFR 91.171 and AIM 1-1-4. Here are the four approved methods that you can use to accomplish the VOR test. A VOR test facility, or VOT, is a signal usually available at larger airports that you can use regardless of your location on the airport, provided you can receive the signal. You can use a VOT signal only on the ground. At some airports located near a VOR, the FAA has marked certified VOR checkpoints, usually on ramps, taxiways, run-up areas, or near a runway. You can also check VORs while in the air when you're over a published airborne checkpoint, along the center line of an airway, or when over a prominent landmark no more than 20 miles from a nav aid at a reasonably low altitude. The dual receiver check is useful if you aren't near a checkpoint when you need to conduct a VOR test and you can receive the signal from a nearby VOR on the ground. A certified repair station can also log a VOR test after service or repair. You can find the locations of and other details about ground and airborne checkpoints in the chart supplement. Chart supplements are available in the document catalog in ForeFlight and in other EFB apps. Make sure that you download the regions necessary for your flights. The table of contents of the chart supplement shows where the lists of VOR test facilities and checkpoints begin. VOR receiver checkpoints and VOTs are listed separately and sorted by state and city name. Here's a typical list of VOR receiver checkpoints, both ground and airborne, in Washington State. In the Pacific Northwest, VOT facilities are available at Seattle-Tacoma International Airport, Boeing Field, Spokane Feltz Field, and Spokane International Airport. Here's the procedure for using a VOT. Tune VORs to the frequency listed in the chart supplement and confirm the ID. Set the OBS to 180 degrees. The flag should indicate 2. The max bearing error must be plus or minus 4 degrees. Note the bearing error. Next, set the OBS to 360 degrees. The flag should indicate from, and again the max bearing error should be plus or minus 4 degrees. Note the bearing error. Here's the procedure for using a ground VOR checkpoint. Taxi the airplane to the designated location on the airport, and then check the receivers and indicators. Tune the VORs to the frequency listed in the chart supplement and confirm the ID. Set the OBS to the indicated 2 bearing. The flag should indicate 2, and the max bearing error should be plus or minus 4. Note the bearing error. Next, set the OBS to the indicated from bearing. The flag should indicate from, and the max bearing error should be plus or minus 4 degrees. Note the bearing error. If you are checking VORs in an aircraft with a PFD that displays bearing pointers, the process is simpler. There's no need to twist OBS knobs and display each navigation CDI separately. Display the bearing pointer, or pointers if the aircraft has dual navigation receivers, tune the VOT or VOR frequencies, and verify that each pointer is correct and within limits. Here both navigation radios are tuned to a VOT, and both bearing pointers show 180 degrees to and 360 degrees from the test signal, with no bearing errors. Ground-based VOR checkpoints are marked on airport taxiways and ramps. These are the official surface markings and signs associated with checkpoints. Here's an overhead view of the VOR checkpoint at Moses Lake, Washington. At a towered airport, ask ground control for taxi to the VOR ground checkpoint and let them know you'll need a couple of minutes to conduct the test. Here's an example of a ground checkpoint at Bozeman, Montana. Now here's an example of an airborne VOR checkpoint near Seattle. And here's that checkpoint highlighted on a chart. Here's another example of a listing for an airborne VOR checkpoint at Hoquiam, Washington. And here's that checkpoint highlighted on a chart. 
Suppose you are on the ground at an airport like Aberdeen, South Dakota. You need to complete a VOR equipment test before you can depart under IFR. Neither a VOT nor a VOR receiver checkpoint is published at the airport. But the Aberdeen VOR is near the airport, and if your airplane is equipped with dual VOR receivers, you can complete a dual VOR check. Tune both receivers to the frequency for the Aberdeen VOR. And center each CDI with the two indication. Compare the courses shown at the top of the VOR indicators. The courses must agree within plus or minus 4 degrees. Next, turn each OBS to center the CDI with a FROM indication. Again, the courses shown on the VOR indicators must agree within plus or minus 4 degrees. Regardless of how you conduct a VOR test, the allowable error for a ground-based test is plus or minus 4 degrees. The allowable error for an airborne test is plus or minus 6 degrees. You can document VOR checks in any acceptable record, as long as the entry includes the information required by 91.171. Here's a sample log. Because my airplane is based at Boeing Field, which has a VOT on the airport, I use a simple table with most of the details already filled in. VOR checks are not typically entered in aircraft maintenance logs. You only have to show that a test was completed within the previous 30 days. If you are an instrument instructor, demonstrate and practice VOR test procedures in an aviation training device. Using airborne checkpoints is a great exercise in an ATD, and if VOTs aren't simulated, you can move the virtual airplane to an airport with a designated ground checkpoint or a nearby VOR. Thanks for watching. You can find more presentations, videos, and related information at my website, blog, and YouTube channel.